The further we get in the class, the more good tools you're going to have for analyzing big O for various functions. But first, I think it's really helpful to, to run through a couple examples where the only thing we do is look at the definition of big O. And we try to argue about big O just based on the definition. So here's, here's an example that we could work out. So let me ask, is the following function big O of n squared? So is n, right, that's a function of n, right, it's just a straight line function of n, is n big O of n squared? Right, and so you've, you've seen, you, you've thought about this sometimes before, perhaps if you've done some algorithms work, and you would, you would, your gut reaction might be that this is not the case. It might be that the answer is no. But remember that big O is just an inequality, right? Always keep this in mind. Big O means less than or equal to in some asymptotic big picture sense. So here, uh, asking is, is n big O of n squared um, has the very simple answer of yes, right? Because if we get large enough, in fact, if n is larger than one, n squared is larger than n, okay? So now if we're arguing from the definition, what do we want to show? Uh, we want to show that, um, and I'm going to write WTS for want to show. We want to show uh, that there exists uh, an n and there exists a c such that n is less than or equal to n squared any time, or to, less than or equal to c times n squared any time little n is, is greater than big N. Uh, when, when n is greater than or equal to big N. Well, with this one, the answer is really easy because it turns out that, uh, that we can choose big N to be one, and we can choose C to be equal to one. Why is that? Well, let's just plug those in and see. So I can ask, is this true? Is it true that, that N is less than or equal to N squared when N is greater than or equal to one? Of course it's true. Right. When n is greater than or equal to, or when n is greater than or equal to one, what do I have? I have that n is less than or equal to n times itself because itself is greater than or equal to one, and that's just equal to n squared, right? And so there's our there's our inequality that we wanted to show. So there we go. We showed something that felt quite obvious, but we actually showed it in a formal way. We just showed that uh, that n is big O of n squared, right? So now let's do another simple one. So let's do following. This one does not appear in, the, in the, the typeset notes. So here's another example. Is n big O of n squared divided by two? Right. And so as the course goes on, you're gonna get used to saying yes, obviously because we've got n raised to the power of one on the left and n squared raised to the power, or n, n raised to the power of two on the right. Um, but let's show this formally. Uh, so the answer, the answer is yes, and that might feel obvious to you, but why, you know, if, it, if something's ever obvious, you should go try to prove it to, to show yourself why it's obvious or to actually, you know, show, prove to yourself that it is obvious, that you're not just making assumptions that aren't, aren't worth making. So how do we show it? Well, we need, we need, uh, we need an n and we need a c. Uh, with this one, if we want to, we can just choose n equals 1. That's often the case. You can just choose n equals 1 and then make c as large as you need to make it to, to make the inequality true. And so, so we want n to be less than or equal to n to be less than or equal to uh, c times n squared over 2 when n is greater than or equal to one. And what c makes that, makes that true? Well, what's the issue here? What's the only problem? The only problem is the two. So let's just choose the c to cancel out that two, and then we're in good shape, then we're in business. So we can just say, let c equal two, then n is less than or equal to n squared 
when n is greater than or equal to 1. Right? Done. And I'm going to write my QED. Thus, I've proved it, whatever the Latin is for that. Okay, and there's an example in the, in the typeset notes where, we're where we ask the question, what about 10n? And the answer ends up being the same, right? And there's a couple ways of going about it, but, but you, can, you can get to the same place. All right, so what, if, what does it mean, then, if the answer is no? Okay, so what, what would a non-example look like? Well, let's, let's think very carefully about what it would mean to say t of n is not big O of g of n. Right, what does this mean? Well, we could kind of talk a little bit about this informally, but I think this is a really good opportunity to go back to the definition, copy the definition, and then just negate it. And we can use this as good, a good opportunity to practice negating quantifiers and that sort of thing. So let me scroll back up to the definition, the original definition of big O. I'm going to copy it, and we can, uh, and we can, actually work this out in, in detail. All right, so here's, here's the definition of big O. All right, so what is this thing? This is, this is big O, big O. So what we want to do is practice negating this statement. Okay, so what would it, what is the, the negative of this statement? If I wanted to say, if I wanted to just not the whole thing, how would I write that out? Well, the, the there exist, turns into a for all. The for all turns into a there exist. And then this turns into a, gr uh, a strictly greater than, right? So how does this work? How do, how do we write this out? Well, we say, so, so let's say just not uh, above, right? We say for all c greater than or equal to zero, and n greater than or equal to zero, there exists an n greater than or equal to big N such that this inequality is violated, such that t of n is strictly greater than c g of n. Okay. So you should spend as much time as you need to to chew on this expression and convince yourself that it means the following thing. What this expression means is no matter how much we scale up g, and no matter how far out we go, there's always going to be a point further down the road where t of n is bigger than g of n. And there only has to be one point. We only have to show that there's one point for this, for this to be true. Okay, so let's think a little bit about how we would actually use this to show a very simple one. So let's, let's show that n squared is not big O of n. Right, so this feels obvious, and the temptation might be to do something like um, say, well, here's, here's the plot. Uh, you know, n squared is obviously, n squared is obviously bigger. Than, uh, than n. There's n squared, there's n. n squared is obviously bigger than n, you know, if we, if we, uh, if we plot this thing out, right? But this isn't a proof that, that n squared isn't big O of n, right? Because what this doesn't show is that there's no way to scale up n uh, that, makes, that, that makes this false. Right, so, so what I might do, if you, if you give me this as a proof and you say, this is a proof that n squared isn't big O of n, I might come to you and say, no, 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 no. I know some really big numbers. So I'm gonna multiply those really big numbers onto n, and, and then we're gonna, then I'll show you, uh, I'll show you that n is always bigger than, than n squared. So you know, how do you know then that n, that n squared eventually gets bigger than n squared? So I'll say, I know some huge number. I'm gonna call that number n. Sorry, I'm gonna call that number c. And I'm gonna plot c of n, and then I'm gonna say, look, C of n is always bigger than n squared on this plot. Why? Why do you think? Why, why do you think that n squared uh, is is not big O of uh, of n? Right. And then what you would do is you would say, okay, 
I, I see your big huge number. Now let's just do this. I'm gonna let n equal big C plus one, right? And to be very strict, we could say it's uh, it's the the ceiling of big C plus one, but I'm not gonna get into those those weeds too much. And then what do we have? Well, we have that that uh, n squared is C plus one times C plus one. Right, and what is this bigger than? Well, this is strictly bigger than c times c plus one, right? And so what I've just done is I've just shown that no matter what c you give me, if I point at, if I, if I evaluate n squared one past the c that you gave me, uh, I get something that's bigger than c times n, right? So this is just c, this is n, and so what do I have? Well, I can put together, I can put together this with this. That's a big arrow there, and say, look, n squared is greater than c of n. Right. So if someone comes and says, I know a huge number, and I'm going to scale this thing up so that it, so that so that your your n squared is never bigger than n, you can just say, I'll raise you a c plus one, and I'll go a little bit further. And then uh, I can show you that there, there exists a, a point, even with that really highly scaled linear function, there exists a point somewhere out there where, where the quadratic function, the n squared function, is greater than the linear function. And that's how you show, using the definition, that's how you show that a function is not big N or big O of another function.